Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating a paper cutout effect using Procreate. So this is an iPad Pro and I'm using the app Procreate. If you don't have an iPad Pro, it's okay for this tutorial because we're not going to be utilizing any pressure settings whatsoever. So if you have Procreate installed on an older iPad that does not support pressure settings, you're totally fine. You can follow along exactly. So what you see on screen is what we're going to be creating together. I am providing the color palette that we're using for this totally free. You can pick it up in the link below the video description as well as the brush that we're going to be using, which is my free mono weight brush. This is a more advanced tutorial in Procreate. So if you find yourself getting stuck at all along the way, I would definitely recommend you check out my free course for Procreate. It's called Procreate for Beginners. It will tell you everything you need to know to prepare you for this project. All right, so I'm going to create a screen size document to get started. All right, so this is our screen size document. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop in my background color and you can pick up this color palette right in the video description. I will walk you through the different color builds if you'd like to input these colors manually. So if I come over here to value, you can see this is the really light pink. This is the medium pink. This is kind of the burnt orange color. This is the sage green. And this is the really dark, almost black, but kind of purplish color. So the first thing we're going to do is drop in this really dark color to the background. We're going to create a new layer right on top of it. And we're going to drop the lightest color right on top. And now we're going to create a mask so we can see what's going on as we start stacking colors behind the letter. If you're not sure how to implement layer masks, I do have a tutorial on that. I will link that up in the video description. So what we wanna do is first change this color so we can see our text. So it doesn't matter, choose any color, just don't choose the lightest color so we can see what we're doing. And then you're gonna come over to your wrench and hit add text. And we're just going to type out any word that you would like. I'm going to keep mine at hello. I'm gonna tap edit style. I'm gonna change it to all caps by toggling this little node right here. And I'm going to change the font to Futura, bold, and I'm going to make it pretty large. All right, and if you want a little extra space between your letters, you can add a little bit of tracking. Tracking adjusts the space between all the letters at once. Kerning is for the spacing between the individual relationships between letters. All right, so that looks like a pretty good size. My size is about 245 points and I've got a tracking of 4.6%. So I'm gonna hit done and I'm just going to move this a little closer to the middle. All right, and now we need to mask this out. So in order to do that, we're going to select our letters. So tap on this A right here for our text and choose select. And then down here, you're going to hit invert. So tap on that and that will invert it. And you can see the selection has moved inside of the letters now. And now we're going to come over to our pink layer, tap on that and choose mask. And once you do that, you can see we've got our lettering right here, our text in black on its own layer, mask layer. So now if I turn off my text layer, you can see my dark color shows through it because we've masked away the text. If this is confusing at all, be sure to check out my tutorial on layer masks and everything will make total sense for you. Now we don't need our selection anymore, so I'm just gonna tap on this icon and that selection will go away and we are good to go with stacking all of our colors. So I'm gonna return back to my layers palette. I'm going to select my dark layer color because whenever we add a new layer, it's going to go right above whatever layer you have selected and that's where we want the first location of our colors. So I'm going to tap on the add layer button and we're going to select our first color. And our first color is going to be this medium pink color. Now I'm going to navigate to my free Procreate Mono Weight brush. And that is right here. And once again, the link to this is right in the video description. And now I'm going to draw a kind of a wiggly line. Let me make this big so you can see it really well. I'm gonna draw a wiggly line kind of a wavy line. And now I'm going to turn off my pink layer right here and I need to connect this. So I'm just gonna come up and around. This needs to be a shape, it doesn't matter what it looks like. We just need to make sure it's a closed shape and now I can drag this color in. And now when I turn this layer back on, my light pink layer, you can see that that shape is totally filled in. Now we can move on to our next color. So I'm going to tap on my dark layer color once again because I want this layer to be beneath the layer that I just did and above the dark purple layer. So I hit the plus icon and now I'm going to select my burnt orange color. And once again, I'm just going to draw a wavy line 
I try to make sure that I don't make the exact same waves in the same places. So if this one's going down, I'll try and kind of go up a little bit just to vary what the look looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off my light pink layer. And once again, we're just gonna draw the shape around and make sure it closes up. All right, so now if I turn my light pink layer on, you can see everything is dropped into place. I think I want this toggled down a little bit because I don't like this little area showing. It looks like a little sliver and almost maybe a mistake. So I need to push this layer either up or down. So I'm going to select it and I'll just tap it up a little bit. See if that, I like that better or if I like this better. I'm gonna come up a little bit. All right, so that looks good. And now I'm going to drop in my green layer and that will be the last layer right here. So the exact same steps. I got my brush already selected. Draw the wiggly. I want some purple to still be on the bottom so I wanted to make sure that I still had some purple down there. So now I'm going to turn that off, draw the shape around and drop in the color. Turn this back on. All right, so all that is looking really good. Now we need to drop in some of our shadows to make that really believable paper cutout look. So in order to do that, we actually need to return to our shapes and we need to make the exact same shape, only black. There are a few different methods for changing colors. I'll show you my favorite method. You can also use the recolor option if that's something that you like to do. This is just what I prefer. So I select my shape layer and then I need this to go underneath that. I'm going to select black, so double tap where black is and that will give you true black. And then I'm going to return back to my layers palette and tap here and just choose fill layer. So now I've got a layer that's exactly like this pink layer that I had selected, only it's black now. I'll show you those steps once again, a little slower. So I'm going to come to the layer that I wanna replicate and I just need it to be black because we're going to make a shadow out of it. So I've got my burnt orange layer selected right here and I need to select the contents of that layer. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select. Now those contents are selected and you can see these lines, these diagonal lines means that you have a selection. So I want this new layer to be right beneath it. So I need to select this layer and create a new layer above it. So this new layer is right beneath it. And now I can just tap on this and choose fill layer and that will fill it with black. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see I have the exact same shape, only it's black now. And I need to do the exact same thing with my green layer. I already have black selected right here. So that's why it fills it in with black automatically. And now I can do all of this right in my layers palette. That's why I prefer this method instead of going back and forth to your recolor option, which is over here in your selections. All right, so once again, tap on the layer thumbnail, select, create a new layer, select, and choose fill, and now I'm all set. Okay, so now we need to create those shadows. So I'm going to come back to my first shadow layer right here, and I like using the warp tool first. You could apply a Gaussian blur or a motion blur if you'd like, but I find that it looks far more realistic if I use my warp tool before applying a blur to it for those more advanced users. So I'm going to select my shadow, come over to my selection tool, and once I do that, I get the option to warp it. So I'm gonna choose warp. So now I can toggle these lines and move where the shadow appears a little bit. So. All right, so the whole point here is that I want the shadow to be a thicker in some areas and thinner in others. It's okay if they're different all the way throughout. There's no really rhyme or reason here because I want the paper to kind of look like it's lifting up in certain areas and not lifting up in others. So your light source is less important here. All we need to make sure is that the shadow is appearing on the bottom part of our paper. So that one looks good. And now we need to apply a blur to it so it looks like a shadow instead of just a hard line right here. So I'm going to hit my magic wand up here and choose Gaussian Blur. And I'm just going to slide it up to like 10% that I found is a pretty good percentage for this effect. And then I'm going to come back to my layers palette. I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply and then reduce the opacity down to between 50 and 70%. I'm going to alter it as I move just to add a little more variety to my piece. So that looks good at 51%. All right, so we're just going to repeat the exact same process for our other shadows. So for the next shadow, select it, choose warp, adjust, just toggle it in a few different areas. We don't want it to be too gigantic. We just want it enough to give that really cool effect. 
So now, once you're happy, now you can apply Gaussian Blur. Change this to Multiply, reduce the opacity. All right, same thing again. Okay, so that's looking really good. And now we wanna apply a texture to these different pieces of paper. So we're going to do that with a clipping mask. So I'm gonna come back to my layers palette. I'm going to go to my very first color layer right here. This is this medium pink layer. I'm going to create a new layer right above it and I'm going to apply a clipping mask to this layer. Now, whatever I put on this layer will only appear within the pink area. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. I'm going to choose the exact same medium pink color. I'm going to return to my layer palette and I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply. That way we see it really well and it's still a version of this color. So multiply always makes whatever you put on that layer a little darker. You can see it's in the darkened category. So now we're going to come back to our brushes palette and you're going to navigate to the charcoals category. This is a default brush in Procreate. It comes right with Procreate, so everybody has this. And you're going to choose the carbon stick texture. And I've got a pretty decent size right here. My size is about 30%. And let me zoom out a little bit. And you're just going to paint in that area and you can see that texture goes right on. And if I zoom in, you can see that texture. The harder you press, you can see the more dense that texture will be or if you go over it multiple times, it'll get a lot more dense. I don't like how dense that looks, so I'm going to double tap to go back and just go over it a little lighter this time. So the effect is a little more subtle. All right, I like the way that looks. And now I can also reduce the opacity just slightly of this because I want it to be a more subtle effect. All right, so I'm down to 70% on that. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for each of these colors, including our dark purplish color. It won't show as well as the others, but it'll still be in there, which I really like. All right, so we're going to come back to our burnt orange. We're going to create a new layer above it, apply a clipping mask, change the blend mode to multiply, and select the same color in your color palette, this burnt orange, and now I can brush over it. All right, you can see that really well. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this down to, let's see, 70% I think is a good one. All right, so one more time, we're gonna come over to our green layer, create a new layer right above it, tap on it, choose clipping mask, change the blend mode to multiply, select the green color from your color palette and brush in. Reduce the opacity. All right, and then the last one we have to do is the background color. All right, so the last thing we need to do is just put in that top shadow so it looks like this word is all cut out of paper that's sitting on top of it. So what we need to do is come over to our layer mask. You're going to select your layer mask. So on this layer, you're going to tap on that thumbnail and choose select and create a new layer right underneath your light pink layer. So I'm going to hit plus. And now we're going to change our color to true black. So tap on your color circle, double tap down here to get true black, return to your layers palette, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. And once you do that, we've got a black layer that has the hello cut out of it. And now we need to apply a blur to it. And when we apply a blur, it will start seeping in to the letters that are right here. You'll see exactly what I mean as I do this. So the first thing I wanna do is just offset it slightly so it looks even more believable. So I'm going to zoom out just slightly and then tap on my selection tool and tap this down and to the right a little bit. And you can see I've got my black starting to show through here. I'm going to deselect. I zoom in here and you can see the black right there. And I'm going to apply a motion blur to it. So I'm going to tap on my magic wand tool, choose motion blur, and I'm just going to tap and drag in that direction until I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. But I think I can actually tap this back up a little bit. It's down a little further than I would like. All right. And then I'm just going to apply Gaussian Blur on it just to soften those hard edges just a little bit more. Slide that over and I'm at about 9% here. All right. And now I 
if I zoom out, you can see that that looks even more like a cutout word that has cut out pieces of paper behind it. So that's how to create a paper cutout effect in Procreate. Once again, the links to the color palette used for this tutorial, as well as that free mono white brush are right in the video description. If you're new to Procreate, check out my free course, Procreate for Beginners. There's a link in the video description to that as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and design freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is at everytuesday. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.